My name is Lila Tunison. I'm with Bed and Biscuit Ranch out of Bismarck, North Dakota. And today I'm here to talk to you about grooming uh, and some tips and tricks to help improve the grooming experience for you and especially for your dog, whether if you're grooming your dog at home or if you're taking them to a groomer. So today I've got both my pups with me here. This is Deuce, he's a German Shepherd dog, and this is Slate, German Short Hair Pointer. Both of them are 10 years old. Deuce here is a rescue and we've only had him for just about a year and initially when I was trying to do his nails anytime I touched his paw he would howl like I was about to chop his foot off so we'll we'll see if he'll if he'll uh, he hasn't in a while down Deuce down good oh boy uh, I've done a good job of desensitizing him so I'm, I'm not expecting any howling but periodically you know it still gets stressful so what can you do? The, the two major problems that groomers have when you bring your dogs in are usually the nail trim and the blowout. And so we're going to go over how to help prepare your dog for those two procedures when they go in to be groomed. So the first thing you need to do is start desensitizing your dog to being handled. And that means, you know, looking in their ears, both ears, we got to look at their teeth, is you should be able to do all of these things with your pup, whether if they're a foster, a puppy, or a 10-year-old dog. You also, this is the most important part for the nail trim, is they've got to get used to having their feet handled. And all you need to do is just pick up their paw in your hand, and then start, you know, sticking their nails out, and handling all of them, to include the new claw. You want to handle all of them. And you want to handle all four feet. So let's say you've got a pup who isn't enjoying this and they start doing that herky-jerky pulling motion. What you're gonna do is you're simply gonna firmly grab that paw and you're gonna hold it until the herky-jerkiness stops, until the dog relaxes. Once the dog relaxes, you're gonna give them a good boy and end the session. Then the next night, do the same thing but with a different paw. And if they're still doing the herky-jerky, same thing. You hold onto that paw, a nice firm grip. You're not gonna crush their foot and, it, and you wait for them to relax. Once they relax, then you let go of their paw. Good boy, good girl. If they manage to pull their paw out of your hand, just calmly go ahead and grab their paw again and hold on to it until they calm down and then let it go. And good boy, good girl. And you wanna do that with all four paws. Once they get to the point where they aren't doing the herky-jerky when you hold one, then hold one and then touch the other paw and make sure that the herky-jerky doesn't come back. And once you can handle all four paws, then you want to introduce the clippers. So I've got a few different clippers here. This first one is called a, a guillotine clipper. It's round and it, the blade comes up. And basically, uh, once they get dull, I'm not a fan of these, um, they end up kind of crushing the nail once they get dull. So that's why I'm not a fan, but I keep one on hand just so you can see. Um, I generally use the, the scissor clipper, and they've got the, the safety at the back end, but it's a scissor clipper and it closes. And I also keep a cat nail clipper on. Um, Especially like deuce, if I don't stay on top of that dew claw, uh, it will grow around and it will get kind of a flat face and you can't get your clipper in behind that nail. So if you've got the cat nail clipper, you can get in behind and kind of clip that back portion of the nail off so that you can get in there with the regular size clipper and clip it off. Um, I also want to say I have everything that I'm showing today I have bought on my own. I am not sponsored by anyone. I am not uh, promoting any anybody's products. Uh, this is just simply my experiences and things that I have bought. So I have paid for everything you're seeing today. So once your dog gets used to you holding their paw and not doing the herky-jerky, then you're just simply going to lift their paw up have the clipper and say, check it out. Check it out, yeah, what's that? Good boy. And then you're gonna tap their nail. You're just gonna tap the end of their toenails. See, and look at that. I've worked, I've worked with Deuce enough that he doesn't even, 
Once again, he used to howl when I do this. So since he's not pulling back, I'm gonna go ahead. I put the safety on. Normally I don't put the nail far enough in to actually hit the safety, but if you've got a herky-jerky dog, it will help minimize any damage you can do. And all I do is I take the tiniest little bit off the end. Good boy. Look at that, he didn't even flinch. I'm just gonna take a teeny tiny bit. Good boy. Stay. Good boy. Very good. Nope, down, down. Yes, good boy. And so that's what you wanna do. Now let's say you've got black nails, you're not comfortable clipping them, and so you're going to always take your dog to the groomer. How do you know when the groomer or vet should be doing your dog's nails? A good general rule is if you can hear your dog's nails hitting the floor, uh, they're getting too long and they need to be trimmed. One of the biggest things that we see in our facility is dogs with nails that are way, way too long. And what ends up happening is they end up curling the toes. So the knuckles on the toes are forced to go sideways. Well, once those knuckles start turning, the dog starts walking farther back on their feet. And then all of the pressure up the joints into the elbows and shoulders just isn't normal anymore. So please, 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 if you're not comfortable doing your dog's nails, Talk with your groomer. Most groomers, uh, some vet offices, will allow walk-ins for nail trims. But still do the desensitization at home because that will make sure that your groomer can quickly, safely uh, trim your dog's nails, keep them clipped, trimmed up, and uh, keep your dog feeling good. Really, really good. Uh, really important for your dog's joint health, especially long-term. So please, please, please do these exercises from the time they're a puppy, or like I said, even if you get a foster dog, uh, foster dogs that have not really been handled or had their nails done can get used to having their nails trimmed. Now, I can't lie, I'm kind of a chicken with the black nails. I have cut my poor guys short one too many times, so I have switched over to a Dremel. Now I'm gonna show you a few different products that I have gone through. I'm gonna start with the Petty Paw. Uh, this takes two C batteries, and if you've got a cat or small dogs, this works pretty decent. Uh, these guys have big, thick nails, and the Petty Paw just doesn't have the oomph to grind them down. Even with brand new batteries, it, it just bogs down and stops spinning. So. If you've got small dog or cats, Petty Paw will probably work for you. It's about 20 bucks. So since that didn't work on my guys, I went to the, the Furminator, and this runs off of uh, four AAA batteries. And I mean, it's nice because AAA batteries, most people have more AAA batteries around their So four AAA batteries. Usually have more AAA batteries around their home than they do C batteries. But once again, I found even with the Furminator that it just, it bogs down. The, these dogs' nails are just way too thick and it can't keep up. So I asked my groomer, what does she use? And so she recommended the Dremel. This is a Dremel 7300. And yes, it's the Dremel that you use out in your garage to cut drywall, to cut metal, whatever. Um, they do have a specific uh, dog Dremel tool and it comes with a lot more of the uh, sanding heads versus all of the other stuff that normally comes in a Dremel set. Uh, even the Furminator runs I think about $25, $30 and the Dremel, this Dremel runs about $45. The nice thing with this is it's got a rechargeable battery on the bottom and it has got some serious horsepower. This thing and it lasts forever. This I can't believe how long this battery has lasted me. So if you're looking for a way to Dremel your dog's nails, Dremel <laughs> is a great product. Nope, come here, deuce. Let's go. Down, down, yes, good boy. So now how do we get used our, so with the black nails, getting back to that, we, um, I personally prefer the Dremel because 
It's easier to control how deep you're going on the nail. You can take just a little bit off at a time. And once your dog gets used to it, you could do this once a week, twice a week, and your dog generally doesn't mind. So this one has a high, off, and low. I tend to Dremel on the high. And to get your dog used to it, you just kind of do the same thing. Check it out, what is this? What is that? Yeah, aqua boy. Then you just turn it on. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. And then you hold the paw. He's not a fan, but he's he knows that I'm pretty good about stopping soon, so. And you just Dremel from the bottom to the top. And just taking off a bit as you go. Uh, be careful so that so that you don't get your nails as you're doing it. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. And initially, as your dog's place, nope, slate, no, place, place. Good boy. So as you're getting your pup used to it, you may only be able to do one nail initially. And then the next night, do another nail. Then the next night, try two nails. And you keep doing that until your dog gets used to having all of their nails done. Another trick that my groomer taught me was uh, to go ahead and put your dog on a table because that uh, they're more likely to stay still. Place. Slate. Place. Down. So they're more likely to not wander off, not get upset if you're putting them on a table. Plus it also simulates the grooming salon um, if that's where you end up taking your dog to get their nails done. So it also helps desensitize them to being on a table and getting their nails done. So that's what we've got for grooming the nails. Very, very important. The next one that we're gonna do is blow drying. We're gonna simulate force drying. Now as you can see, these guys are not wet you don't actually have to go and shower your dog, but this is the second most aggravating process for dogs when they go in for a groom is the force dryer. All you need is a standard hair dryer, preferably one that you can shut the heat off on or put it on low, and almost all hair dryers have high and low on them. Guys, you can still do this. Hair dryers are like 15 bucks. You don't need to go get some super cool thing, and it's still good to practice uh, blow drying your dogs and getting them used to being around the dryer. That way, grooming is just a way less stressful event for your pup and your groomer. So we're gonna just kinda do the same thing. Check it out, what is that? Yeah, just kinda let them get used to it. And then we're gonna start on low, and we're just gonna blow it away, just so that it's not in their face, just so that they get used to the noise. Yeah, good boy. Boy. And you can see he's not really reacting, so I'm giving him a good boy because that's what we want. We always want to reward the behavior that we want. We don't want to, if he's nervous and jumpy, we don't want to be petting that because if you're petting your dog while they're freaking out, you are indirectly telling them, I like what you're doing. Please give me more of that. And we don't want more of them freaking out. We want them to calm themselves. And then once they're calm, then we're gonna give them pets and say, good boy or good girl, yes. We wanna, we wanna pet the behaviors that we want more of, right? So he did good with low, so now we're gonna go up to high. And as you can see, he's kind of looking around. Now, once again, he's been blow dried multiple times, so he's kind of used to it. Um, and he doesn't really struggle with the groomer at all. He does, he does a good job. Unless I'm in the room and then he's a big crybaby, so I can't be in the room when he's getting groom groomed. Because, uh, yeah, then he just cries because mommy's there, right? So now that he's done good on low and high, then we're just going to start blow drying him on low. Boy. 
Now as I'm blow drying him, as you can see my hand is kind of under the blow dryer because even though this has a low heat, it's still kind of warm. I, can't shut off the heat completely. So by having my hand under the hair dryer, I can feel how hot his body is getting, how hot the hair dryer is, and I that way I can make sure I'm not overheating him. Uh, most groomers have low to no heat in their forced air dryers. It's just a lot of air, but the noise and the feel of the, the warm air and the air being blown over him definitely will help desensitize him and prep him for grooming. So since he did good with low, now we're going to go to high. Good boy. And so you can see it on his face, he's not excited about it. He does not like it, but he's tolerating it. Um, most There aren't a lot of dogs that think getting blown out is the best thing in the world. Almost every dog, the noise is hard on their ears and it's a weird thing and they don't like it. So if you practice those two things, you are gonna make your dog's life better and you're gonna make your groomer's life better. And you're gonna end up with a better haircut, a happier dog who's not traumatized because the only time they see the clippers and the blow dryer is when they see the groomer. Uh, so it'll just make the overall grooming and care of your dog go better in the long run. So I hope this was helpful. Um, once again, uh, handle your dog, desensitize them, end on a win. So if, if Deuce here had been whining or crying, I would have dropped back to the low and just blow dried for a little bit, wait till he was calm, shut it off, and then start again, and then do it a little bit longer. Uh, because once again, you don't want to stop when they're nervous or when they're overexcited uh, because they're getting that win. You want them to get to a point where they're calm and they can handle it, and then you stop and you give them lots of praise, right? Right, are you such a good boy? Are you such a good boy? Yes, yes. Give him tummy rubs and head rubs and give him lots of love. All right, well, thank you much. Please be safe and uh, we'll continue to put out more educational videos. I hope you found this helpful. Have a great week.